Hey guys, welcome back to Grafting Dragon Fruit. It's Richard and in this video today, I'm going to be harvesting all of my ripe dragon fruits. So let's get right to them. The first one I'm going to be harvesting is Condor. So I have my shears here, my favorite one with the curvature because this just helps me cut dragon fruit off so clean. And you guys see me here with my bucket so that way it helps me carry everything. But Condor here, let me just talk a little bit about Condor. People have been telling me or reading from other websites that condor is a self-sterile varieties. I got my condor from Edgar Valdivia and he also told me that it was a self-sterile variety but when I self-pollinated myself with his own pollen it did actually fruit for me. So in terms it is a self-fertile variety. The only thing about using its own pollen is once I use its own pollen, the fruit didn't get so big. So even though it's a self-fertile variety and you can use its own pollen, I still highly recommend you guys cross-pollinate it because look at the fruit size of this one that I cross-pollinated and this one I use its own pollen so the fruit didn't grow too big. So this has been ripening on the branch now for about 40 to 46 days. This one's about 46 days. This one's about 41 days. So they're ready to harvest. So let's go ahead and take this off. Here's my first condor. We're gonna go ahead and put it in our bucket. And here's the second condor. Got my shears. And here is the second one. So let me show you guys size comparison. This is the one that I used with its own pollen and this is the one that I cross pollinated. It's almost double its size. So yes, condor is a self fertile variety, but if you cross pollinate, the fruits can get actually bigger. So if you guys are following um, Spicy Exotics, I know they have some information about how their variety is self sterile. On that website, they also say Delight is self fertile, but that's another variety that's self sterile. So, be careful of what you guys read online and uh, to find out the real truth is you guys just got to just test it out yourself to see if it's true or false. So let's go harvest some more dragon fruits. The next variety I'm gonna be harvesting is way back here. This is a Asunta 6 seedling sister that I have not named yet and I'm still going through the testing phase. Um, this fruit here has actually been on the branch for about 43 days and I marked the dates here and this was pollinated with Townsend Pink. So I'm gonna go ahead now and take this off. But I just wanted to show you guys how pretty this fruit is. So let me get out of that. But I just love the tone and colors on this. You can see the skin has stretched to its maximum potential and you can still see that there's a little bit green on it. But I know that it's fully ripe because it's been over 42 days. Dragon fruit usually ripe at about 38 to 45 days. So this is right in between there. So let's go ahead and take this in. This is a new variety that I'm gonna be tasting and I'm very excited to see what it's all about. So this is a little special one. Let's go and see what else we got. Okay. This is Natural Mystic here. And this is Costa Reconsensus. They look like they're ready, but they just barely turned red about three days ago. I want to see the skin stretch out a little bit more. You can see the fruit still looks a little bit compact. When it's stretched out like this, when it's all plump, that's when you know they're ready for harvest. So Natural Mystic and Costa Rensis is not ready yet. So let's go ahead and go down more. Here is Pink Panther. Pink Panther is one of my favorite self-stir varieties. And you gotta be careful when you harvest Pink Panther because if you guys take a look, there's this little tiny thorn right here right there and a lot of the times when people harvest dragon fruit they just grab at it and just go to town and then next thing you know you get this sharp poke and you're just like out so make sure you guys see that i'm just gonna brush that off but we have a couple that's ready here so this pink panther is ready to go and as i always tell you guys i love these shears because look at how close i can cut to the fruit and without damage too much of the branch and the fruit this one here also looks ready So these have been ripening for about 42 days now, you guys. So you guys can see there's a little pattern going on. About the 40th day mark is when I usually come out here and count all the days and see when it's time to harvest. I have one more that I think is ready to go. And this one is still a tad green. You can see that there's still kind of green on here. I'm gonna let this go on for about two to three more days before I harvest this one to get all of that sugar to maximize in there. And 
I even see new buds starting to appear out. We have another pink panther bud blooming and we're at the end tail of our season, so that's great. All right, let's go on and see what else we got. Wow. So you guys are used to seeing all of the red skin colored dragon fruits, the green skin ones, but did you guys know that there are also yellow skin dragon fruit that look absolutely beautiful as well. These have been on the branch for about 40 days. I would like to give it another four to five days or even six days, but because I'm so curious, I just want to harvest one to see how they taste. So this one to me has some wrinkles on top. The Brax here is no longer green on most of the ones on the top, just like how these are still green. So I'm not going to harvest that one. So we're going to test our first Thai gold. This is Thai gold, you guys. We're harvesting at day 40. So Thai gold, this is the first Thai gold that we're going to try before I harvest all these other ones. So a lot of the times, you guys, I like to do this where I harvest one first, see how it is already at its state. Sometimes I'll harvest one a couple days earlier and then I'll harvest another one a few days later. And until I feel like they're getting closer to their peak ripeness, that's when I'll start taking everything off. So this is gonna be our base taste tester to see how all of the Thai gold is doing. So this one is gonna be a good baseline to see when we're gonna harvest the rest. So we're gonna leave the rest of those Thai golds there. We have purple haze, you guys. I've been letting purple haze ripe for about 50 days now. That's a very long time. They're usually ready to harvest about 43 to 45 days, but because I wanted them to get bigger, so big that the skin is even starting to crack. So now I know I've reached my limit and I've pollinated this on July 29th. And this is why I write these dates on here with the Sharpie, you guys. It's really good to go out there when you're pollinating and as you're pollinating, go ahead and get a Sharpie and write down the dates when you pollinate it and what you pollinated with because this information and data is going to be helpful for when you guys go back out here to check on your fruit if a pollen didn't work and you knew it didn't and you knew it didn't abort it you can write a for abort so next time when you come out here to pollinate your dragon fruit you have all of these data on your branch so you don't make the same mistake by using a pollen it did not like so that's why you guys see me have a date and PLV just stands for Pink Laverne. So I have all these initials that I understand and I know Pink Laverne worked, so I'm not gonna put an A next to it. If it aborted, I would put an A so I know not to use that pollen again. But now they are ready for harvest. We are at 50 days on these guys and I think they're perfectly, perfectly ripe. Just look at that. It's huge, it feels really heavy. The skin is at its maximum. It's almost stretching to where it rips here. Let's go ahead and harvest the rest. Here's another one. I love these shears, you guys. Check this out. The curvature on here, you can stick it right there. And when you snip it, you can see that I barely cut the branch. So that way all the nodes here can produce new buds for next season. And I didn't cut into the fruit. So it keeps the fruit nice and fresh and it doesn't deteriorate from being an open wound. All right, we have one more. This is another purple haze. Whoa, whoa, it almost escaped from me, you guys. <laughs> right when I cut it off, it fell right into the trellis hole. So this one is all, uh, ready as well. Look at that. The fins here are turning nice and red. We're getting less green bracts, so we know they're ready. All right, my basket here is getting full already, but I still got so many more dragon fruits to harvest. So let's go ahead and keep on going. All right, this is gonna be a big harvest on this one here, you guys. We have a Sunta 5, and you see these green ones with a little bit of blushing on them? These are a Sunta 4, but we have a lot of a Sunta 5s here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight a Sunta 5s that we're gonna harvest right now. So some of these I've marked with the dates and what I pollinated with. So. I wanted to create new hybrids, so that's why I write these, uh, what I pollinate as well. So when I go back to this fruit, I know exactly what was pollinated with. So if I ever wanna go back to these seeds to create new hybrids, then I know exactly what it is. So this one has Hannah. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna harvest this fruit. Okay guys, I have a Sharpie here with me. And it says I 
I've crossed this with Hannah. So what I'm gonna do is at the base here, I'm just gonna write X Hannah. So if I ever wanna go back to get these seeds and germinate them, I know exactly what this cross was with. So this is a Sunta 5 cross with Hannah. So I'm gonna write every single one of these that I've cross pollinated with. So later when I go check out the fruits, if I feel like I wanna keep some of these seeds, then I'll do that because I have it all written down here. So let's go ahead and harvest the rest and label everything else. Asunta 5 is easily one of my favorite fruits, you guys. This never tastes bad, ever to me. All right, this is also Hannah. We're gonna write X Hannah. And let's continue going. This one was pollinated with Natural Mystic. So let me put X N M for Natural Mystic. We have another one here with Natural Mystic. X N M for Natural Mystic. So guys, this is pretty cool here. A lot of people ask, does pollinating with certain type of pollen influence the fruit to grow bigger or smaller? And I find that somewhat to be true. I've pollinated this Asunta 5 here with Sugar Dragon. And a lot of you guys know Sugar Dragon is a small fruit. They get up to about four ounces, three ounces as maximum. I've seen some that gets up to six ounces or even half a pound. But this Asunta 5 was pollinated with Sugar Dragon. And just check out that fruit. It's so much smaller than the rest of the Asunta 5s. And I wonder if that's because of the sugar dragon pollen that I use. So it's very interesting. I might have to test this again, just to get some solid data of if pollen really affects the size of your fruit. But I do know if you cross pollinate other fruits with each other, they do get bigger. So as long as it likes its pollen, it grows very, very big. This one here was pollinated with also natural mystic. Cool. Another natural mystic. This one, purple haze. So this one, I, I really like purple haze and I really like red laverne. So I was very curious if we combine these two flavors together, what we would get. So definitely gonna be taking some of these seeds and uh, grafting them after I germinate them. So this is gonna be a really cool one. So I wrote pH for purple haze. And this one is a pink laverne. Pink laverne is also another variety that I really enjoy. So I wanted to also grow these seeds cross with a soon to five and see how they taste. And this is why I have so many dragon fruit, you guys. I'm always creating new hybrids and it's almost like an addiction and I find pure joy of just creating new hybrids. I feel like it's almost better or more enjoyable to do that because I get to try a new dragon fruit variety almost every year that people don't even have because I grew myself. Okay, I got all of the Asunta 5. All that's left now is the Asunta 4. So here's an Asunta 4. So these ones you guys um, mainly harvest when they're like half green and half pink. When they grow all the way pink or red, um, the seeds actually start to germinate in the fruit and you're gonna get a taste that tastes like chlorophyll because the seeds have sprouted already and it almost tastes like you're eating microgreens. <laughs> if you like that, then let them grow to be uh, more color on it, but half green, half pink like this is perfect time. And this one was also pollinated with Natural Mystic. So I'm only writing the ones that I'm interested in creating hybrids just in case on the fruit, but any ones that I cross and I didn't think that would be a great hybrid to create, then I just won't write anything on it. And this one also has Natural Mystic. I already have one, so I won't do that. So, so far, we have all of these fruits. And I think we have about one more trellis or two more trellis to harvest from. We have a red laverne and a pink laverne, and then that's it. So let's go ahead and get this pink laverne here. So in the back of this trellis here, I have a pink laverne that's been on here for 45 days now. And a lot of spider webs has actually started to accumulate. And as you guys know, I don't like to take dragon fruit, I mean, uh, the webs off of dragon fruit because these spiders actually are very beneficial and has helped me so many times. 
but because I'm harvesting this fruit, I have to take him off. And I hope he just stays around and sets his home up in the next dragon fruit. Here we have pink Laverne. This one is looking very nice, nice and plumped. You can see some of the wrinkles on top of here. So we know this is ready. Even though the bracts are green, they're getting pretty big. Check that out. Okay, we have one more dragon fruit to harvest. I'm gonna leave this here. I'll come back to it. Here we go. Last dragon fruit to harvest, you guys, is red Laverne. This has been on here now for 49 days and it's most definitely ready. I have a lot more unripe fruits, a lot more flowers that's gonna be blooming in the next few days. There's about 15 more flowers that's gonna be blooming in the next few days. So we're gonna have a lot of these fruits and I love Red Laverne because it tastes so good and the fruit grows so big. But this one is like getting a lot, <laughs> a lot older. You can see like the wrinkles on there. So it's definitely ripe. All right, guys, this was the last dragon fruit. Let's go back to see our haul and see what we got here. We have red laverne, pink laverne. We have all of the Sunta fives here. Wow. Sunta five had a great harvest this season. We have a Sunta four. More Sunta five. And if you guys don't recognize their fruit by its skin yet, that's why I have a Sharpie. You can write down the name of them. I know exactly what they are, so I don't have to do that. But later, I might write them on there just in case if a family member wants to eat them, I can tell them exactly which one to look for so that, we, that way they can have that specific variety. So this is Purple Haze. We have Thai Gold. This one is the only one that looks so different from everyone, so I know exactly this one's gonna be Thai Gold. This is our Condor. Condor. This is the Asunta 6 seedling that I have not named yet. So this is a new variety. And we have some pink panthers. So that is the harvest for today, you guys. As you can see, there's still so many more fruits from the second and third cycle that needs to ripen. But this is essentially the first wave. And I know we're kind of pretty late in the season because dragon fruit season has came late this season. But the reward is still bountiful, you guys. These are all the dragon fruits. They're all exotics. They're all gonna be super amazingly tasting. Can't wait to share this with my family. So what I'm gonna do now is wash all of this, put it in my fridge for about an hour, and later we're gonna be enjoying dragon fruit for dessert after dinner. All right, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this harvest video. If you guys did, hit that like button. If you guys have any questions with any of these varieties I harvest today, leave it in the comments below. And if you guys haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that way you guys won't miss a single thing. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of Crafting Dragon Fruit. Peace.